we take a quick look at some of the newest and strangest engines out there. Beginning with number 7, the VC Turbo. Controllability is the key to this new type of engine. It's able to adjust its compression ratio by moving an actuator arm connected to each piston. A harmonic drive is used to adjust the height of the piston, and this allows a compression ratio all the way from 8 to 1 to 14 to 1. Infinity claims that it combines the power of a 2 liter gas turbo engine with the torque and efficiency of a diesel engine. Now for me, I'm a little bit skeptical on the design and its reliability. And there are quite a few new types of engines which are also combining the advantages of both diesel and gas powertrains. The VC Turbo will likely be used in Infinity cars within the next couple of years. At number 6, the Circle Cycle Engine. One of the weirdest conceptions out there is an orbital non-reciprocating engine. It has no block, crankshaft, or even valves, so this thing is definitely weird. Instead, it uses combustion chambers which are mounted on two different gears. These chambers join together and they create the combustion stroke. And then they disengage completely which negates the needs for valves. Now currently there are two prototype engines and it's pretty impressive to see something like this actually running. Let's just hope the gears stay aligned to prevent catastrophic failure. At number 5, the Quasi Turbine. I promise to present weird engines, and this one is certainly weird. It's yet another rotary style engine which has been in the works for some time. The design appears to be a little bit too complex, and it uses a deformable hybrid rotor. This could potentially allow for higher compression ratios, but I'm still a little bit skeptical on its efficiency and lifespan. Either way, it's a neat little engine design which has been already tested through a couple of applications, and ultimately, it's turning out to work better as a steam and air motor with several variants already on the market. At number 4, the X3. Yes, I'm bending the engine definition a little bit, and technically this is called a hull thruster. It basically uses a stream of ions to propel a spacecraft. They produce very little thrust, and they wouldn't be even comparable to any engine on the ground. But in space, it's all about efficiency and velocity, and they can slowly accelerate a craft to over 25 miles a second, which is a far greater speed achieved by chemical rockets, while only using a fraction of fuel. The new X3 can generate over 5 newtons of thrust, which may not seem much, but it is the highest of any ionic plasma thruster to date. It can also run continuously for 100 hours, which may lead the X3 into the record books. At number 3, the Skyactiv X. From the rotary to the 5 stroke Miller cycle, we all know that Mazda likes to feature different types of engines in their cars. Their new Skyactiv X is sort of like a hybrid engine, with it utilizing compression and spark ignition. Now, it works by compressing the fuel and air mixture to the threshold of ignition, and then it uses a spark plug to ignite the fuel at this certain point. Now the fuel is very lean, so it does not ignite prematurely, and the combustion ratio is very high, just like diesel engines. So ultimately the ignition is very controlled and it combines the efficiency of a diesel with the cleanliness of a gasoline engine. Now the initial variants will be released in the Mazda 3, and this could be a revolutionary engine, we'll just have to wait and see. At number 2, the Acades 2.7 liter. This is one of my favorite engines, even though its concept is not entirely new. The three-cylinder six-piston engine produces over 270 horsepower and 480 foot-pounds of torque. It's a gasoline compression ignition engine, so it has no spark plugs, and it features two pistons per cylinder chamber. Now it allegedly achieves 37 miles per gallon, and I'm interested in seeing how much this engine is going to weigh in the end. It's intended to be used in the F-150 series of trucks, and there have already been multiple variants being tested. And number one, the liquid piston, and no, it's not what you think. This new type of rotary engine is very light and efficient. It's even received a little bit of funding from DARPA. Now the liquid piston is kind of like a Wankel motor turned inside out. Its rotor turns inside this triangular housing, with the seals being stationary at the apexes of the triangular frame. The company claims that this is more efficient than the Wankel engine, because the shifting geometry of its internal cavities lets it extract most of the energy of the exhaust gases before voiding them. 
Now, they ultimately claim that a 4 pound liquid piston can produce the same amount of horsepower as a 40 pound Wankel engine. We'll just need confirmation on that. But I just wonder how long the engine actually lasts for. That's the question here. So, once again, thanks for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And make sure to subscribe to my channel.